Hi guys, in this video, it's a little bit longer, but um, I met a guy named Tim out in Oklahoma at the Okie Tech Star Party. That's a place where a bunch of astronomers come from all around with their telescopes and stuff, camp out for a week and, and do astrophotography and enjoy the night sky. Well, I met this guy named Tim and he has the same Orion X-T8 Dobsonian telescope that I have, but he upgraded his and it was really cool. He even let me do a live stream on it. There's some clips of that at the end of the video. But he went through what he upgraded on it. And I get a lot of questions about my telescope. And this is a great video I thought to share with you of everything he did to his, all right? So enjoy and thanks for subscribing. See you soon. This is uh, Tim from St. Louis here. And uh, he has the Orion X-T8 like I have, but he has it pretty tricked out here. Um, I know with mine, I had issues with the stock focuser. He has an upgraded one. I had issues with, uh, the pan and tilt, but let's uh, hear from him on everything he's got on this um, updated. So, so there's actually a little, a little bit, bit of a story behind the focuser, uh, if you want to start with that. I was out observing one night, um, it was a, a public night at my uh, local astronomy site, and I got a little too excited, uh, slew into my next object, I don't remember what it is now, but ended up pulling the entire daub down and it landed right on the focuser. Oh man. Bent the rod on, on the, uh, Crayford focuser, the, the rod that goes through right here, so it just wouldn't rack in and out anymore and ended up having to replace it. I went with the GSO because it uh, kept the same stack height as the stock focuser, so I didn't have to worry about adjusting back focus or any of that. But yeah, so I've got that. I've uh, got the uh, Formica and Teflon on the altitude and azimuth bearings. Uh, make the motion a little smoother, a little easier. Oh, that is real smooth. Mm-hmm. So what, what all is involved in, in getting this little upgrade? So uh, I believe the website is uh, astrosystems.com um, and they provide the strips of Formica and the Teflon pads. Um, they can uh, make a, ver a variety of different sizes. Um, and they will also uh, cut out a Formica ring for you to put underneath your uh, baseboard. Um, uh, I think all total it uh, was only about 150 bucks or so to do, to do all the bearings. Wow. Um, and then I also Let me get around to this side here. Flocked the entire interior all the way down the tube. Let's see if we can see in there. It's kind of hard to see with the yeah, camera. Yeah, it's well, it's very black in there too. That's, yeah. that's kind of the idea, increasing that contrast. Yep. So, so that's all done. And then some additions up here with dew heaters. And yep. I see you actually have a nice uh, counterweight here because um, these these. SkyQuest XT8s do get top heavy, especially, we'll go to your um, eyepiece stuff there in a yeah. moment, but I didn't even know Orion, I think that, yeah, yep. Orion makes... They make a three pound, which is what this one is, and they also make a one pound counterweight, which I started with until I got heavier eyepieces and had to get a heavier counterweight. <laughs> so with Orion out of operation, where, where can you find a lot of parts for stuff like their, their um, Orion scopes? I found this one on highpointscientific.com. Um, they kind of uh, took over a lot of the remainder of Orion and Mead's inventory and are uh, selling it through through their website online there. Um, beyond that, I don't really know where you can get any more Orion stuff, unfortunately. Yeah. So, yeah, but I've got it all stickered up. I think I'm going to do a lot of these features he has here. And then he's got the nice Telrad mounted. Telrad with the dew heater cover included. Well, not included, I had to get it separate, but it does a great job keeping, keeping the tail red clear all night. Just find my object and then cover it back up and it's nice and, nice and warm and dry until I need it again. And then he's got the four channel Thousand Oaks dew heater. So cool, man. So uh, I don't, I don't have, don't have it out here right now, but I, uh, I power it, power the dew heaters with uh, one of those Apertura uh, little power packs portable power oh, okay. packs yeah okay those are so, nice yeah yeah save cables because sometimes all these dc and usb and right it gets a little it gets becomes a squirrel's nest and right? there's kind of limited field power out here too so right and uh let's go to the eyepieces unless there's anything else right here no that's kind of show. about it on the dob um maybe a little mean, bit of a promotion here you see all the stickers on here um these four are actually creations of my wife uh, they are Shades of Alyssa on Instagram. All right. Does a lot of fan art. Oh, those are really cool. 
I love the Star Wars ones. I might have yeah. to get some of those off you. And then just a lot of other random space related stickers. Nice. And if you want to move to the eyepieces. All right, we're getting into the into the toy box here. Oh. oh. My so main, what do we got? My main eyepiece that spends the most time in the in the, the telescope is my 22 Nagler. I got it about a year ago and could not be happier with it. Before this, I was using a 26 millimeter Apertura SWA, um, and it's actually about whoops, about the same um, field of view as the 22 Nagler. Okay. So, and then my wide field is my Apertura 38 millimeter SWA, 70 degree apparent field of view. That's my Andromeda Pleiades um, veil eyepiece. I just got here at Okitex, a new to me, Teleview 16 millimeter Type 5 Nagler. Nice. Oh man, Used I want to. I want to see I, if if I can. I'd like to look through this tonight. I'd love for you to come when, look when through you're it. Checking I, this stuff out. I, uh, first light for me with this was M13, the Hercules globular cluster, and it th this this was the perfect field of view for for that glob. Um, it, cool. M11 looked fantastic through it. I'm so happy I was able to get that out here. And then my high power for right now is my Explore Scientific 11 millimeter, 82 degree. Very cool. That's my planetary. I also have a two times Teleview Barlow um, for even higher power, but I eventually want to try to get a uh, five millimeter Nagler as well to, to take the place uh, for high power. Adab, you're probably gonna need a paracore. Even uh, at f6, not a super short focal, focal length, the difference this made in reducing the coma was literally night and day. Awesome. Totally start. I think, uh, I, I think I'm going to get edge. one of those. Yeah. Definitely want to get one. This was my most recent pur purchase about six months ago. So if anyone had a lot of rain around that time, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. So, man. yeah, that's kind of the, the setup right now. So let's uh, get you posing with your scope yeah, there. Man. <laughs> Check that out. Awesome. Thank you for taking the time. My pleasure, man. And uh, sharing it. I've had a lot of compliments on the performance of this scope out here this week. I could not be yeah. happier about it. Well, I love love the 8-inch. That's what I always do in my videos and shorts with. And uh, I want to upgrade it. Yeah. Seriously upgrade it. So, yeah, man. Yeah, just a couple little things, really, is all, all I've done. And improved the performance greatly. Sweet. Yeah. We're very smart. I like Sometimes. It, so. <laughs> so we're uh, headed waxing into the first quarter moon. We're in Oklahoma tonight, checking out the moon. And uh, this is a short little live, but there, let me try to do the thing real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in, pull it back out. There's a nice screenshot. Anybody want a screenshot of the moon? That's about the best or biggest I can get it for you. One more side Without tangent. it washing out on you. Hey, Will. Good to see you, man. Hello, you too. Just got a little shot of the moon. Isn't it pretty? Mm, it's okay. He should blow it up. He should blow up. The moon. He gets so mad at the moon because sometimes, you know, when the full moon, it's too bright to do astro. All right, so here is this place, the Astro Bus. All right, guys. With a uh, partner with uh, Almonte RV. So thank them for making this trip possible. Thank you, Almonte. Ha, 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 ha.